So last time we looked at the normal pressures in the capillary and today we're going to look at what happens when there are problems. So if you remember in our last uh, visit we looked at the hydrostatic pressure on the arterial side which is forcing fluid out and the colloid osmotic pressure which is pulling fluid in and is pretty much the same throughout the capillary and then we looked at the hydrostatic pressure on the venous side, the blood pressure, that is also pushing fluid out. Actually that's probably a little larger than I wanted to draw so let's back off on that a little bit. Okay, hydrostatic pressure on the venous side and that's pushing fluid out. And we discovered that if you sum up these pressures, so you have a pressure that's pushing out the hydrostatic pressure due to the force of contraction of the left ventricle, the colloid osmotic pressure is pulling fluid in, and because the hydrostatic pressure is larger than the colloid osmotic pressure, the net force is going to push fluid out of the capillary on this side. Over here, the colloid osmotic pressure is greater than the hydrostatic pressure on the venous end, so it's going to pull fluid back in on this side. But let's now think about what might happen if the, uh, if the individual had a problem with a heart failure. So in heart failure, what's going to happen is that the uh, hydrostatic pressure is going to be increased here. So in heart failure, the ventricle is not going to be able to pump the blood out as well and so the blood is going to back up on the venous side and that's going to increase this pressure. So we're going to have a greater pressure here pushing fluid out than we had before. And now if you sum up the colloid osmotic pressure and the hydrostatic pressure on the venous end you're going to have a lot less fluid coming in and you might even have a net outflow of fluid from the venous end of the capillary and that's going to put extra fluid into the uh, tissue space and we call that when that happens we call that edema and if the heart is failing and extra fluid is going out into the tissue space you can either have edema in the lungs and that would be due to a failure in the left side of the heart because that's the side of the heart that drains the blood that is coming from the lungs and we would call that then pulmonary edema, pulmonary edema, uh, or you might have uh, a problem uh, in the systemic circulation and uh, if, the, if there's excess fluid there you wind up having edema in the uh, peripheral tissue, so swollen feet uh, and uh, swollen legs might be the clinical result of that. And um, the uh, issues around uh, heart failure uh, are exactly those issues uh, and so uh, a clinician would be looking for signs of swelling in the feet and also looking for signs of swelling uh, in the legs and would be listening for evidence of uh, uh, extra fluid in the lungs so that's what's going on uh, with heart failure. Now let's consider a different problem. What would happen if the problem were not in the heart but the problem were in the uh, colloid osmotic pressure? What would happen if the colloid osmotic pressure were uh, too low? So how would that happen? Well a decrease in the albumin concentration. So if you had a decrease in the uh, amount of albumin that was found 
uh, in the capillary, which you might have if someone had poor nutritional status, if someone were starving, for example, that would uh, drive down the colloid osmotic pressure, and that would decrease the pressure that's drawing fluid back in. So you would have less pressure drawing fluid in, and as a result, again, you would wind up with excess fluid in the tissue space or uh, edema, and that's exactly what you what you do see clinically. So those are just two examples of what can happen when the capillary pressures are disturbed by illness. Let's look at the special case of inflammation. And if you remember from our uh, previous discussions, you have a force that's pushing fluid out on the arterial side. That's the pressure, the hydrostatic pressure on the arterial side. And you have a force that's pushing out on the venous side, and that's the hydrostatic pressure on the venous side. And this force, the hydrostatic pressure on the arterial side is larger. There's, there's a greater force pushing out on the arterial side than there is on the venous side. And we also uh, talked about the colloid osmotic pressure, which is a pressure that's coming from uh, albumin. and that's drawing the fluid back in. But here's the thing, uh, in inflammation, there's something else going on. And what happens in inflammation is that the capillary becomes leaky. Yeah, it becomes leaky. And the albumin that is in the capillary can actually leak out of the capillary. So now you've got albumin and other proteins sitting out here in the tissue space. So now you have the force coming from the contraction of the left ventricle that's pushing fluid out on both ends. And you also have albumin sitting out here now, and that's going to also draw fluid out. So you have albumin inside and albumin outside. The net effect of this is that you have a lot more fluid leaving the capillary. You have a lot more fluid that's going to come out of the capillary and get into the tissue space. And that's why in inflammation we have swelling because of that disturbance in the capillary dynamics.